worship at LCC. We're so glad you're tuning in wherever you happen to be this week, um, wherever you are on your journey of faith, wherever the summer has led you, hopefully uh, someplace warm and beautiful um, outside and uh, with a little time with family. Um, wherever God meets you, um, we're so glad you're here and God is with you. With that, let us begin worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place your hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And by your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. Beloved and sovereign God, through death and the resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, kids, I want to invite you to come on over from wherever you are and Gather around the screen for a children's sermon with Pastor Joel. Kids, it's Pastor Joel coming to you from the Lutheran Church of the Cross. Hope you're having a good summer. So, as I like to do a lot of my children's messages, I have a little quiz for you. Ready for it? I want you to give me your best answer. I'm thinking of a number between one and three. <laughs> Can you guess it? Two. You got it. How many of you at home got two? A couple people here in the church got to, all right. I want you to come up with my birth month. What month was I born in that starts with the letter O? O March? No. August? No. How many said October? Ha! <laughs> you got it. Okay. How many leaves are in a four-leaf clover? Four, right? These are silly questions. I'm not trying to trick anybody. I want you to know that when I ask you a question and I give you the answer, so you already know what the response is, that's just like a life of faith. Do you know that God doesn't ask us to do anything without giving us the strength and the ability to do it? Do you know God doesn't ask us to go anywhere without showing us how to get there and going on the path with us? Do you know that God doesn't tell or ask or command or invite anything from us without giving us what we need to do it? It's really cool. 
in our journey of faith, God is always giving us what we need. Even when we don't think we can go where God would have us go, God shows us the way. Even when we don't think we can do the things that Jesus is teaching us to do, we can do it because Jesus is there with us, strengthening us. I want you to know there's never a time or a place where God isn't with you and giving you what you need for that day and for that moment. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your promise to always be with us and to give us what we need to follow you and to have eternal life and to live in that life this day. Strengthen each of us, especially the little ones in our community, as they're learning to follow and trust in you. In Jesus' name, all the people said, Amen. I'd like to share with you the gospel uh, for this week. We're listening for the gospel in Paul's letter to the Romans. Glory to you, O Lord. Paul writes, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So if I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope this summer is bringing to you and to the people you love some R&R. &R. I am fresh off some vacation time and I'm so grateful um, to serve the ch a, a church that knows that a little R&R &R is important for, for us. And so thank you for the chance to to have some vacation time, and I appreciate Pastor Megan and Chad and everyone on the team keeping the ministry going. It's really a blessing to be a part of this church and, and so many great servants around, um, around LCC. So it's usually around uh, evening time that something happens to me, and this happens between four and five nights a week. It's in that space between when your stomach starts grumbling before supper, but it's not yet time uh, to prepare a meal or sit down and eat. And this goes on um, many times for me. And it's, it's when my tummy starts grumbling and I take out a beautiful bag of nacho cheese Doritos. No, this is not product placement. Frito-Lay did not pay me anything to do this. Although, if they'd like to, you can mail a check to the church. I love nacho cheese goodness. I know I shouldn't eat Doritos five nights a week. And maybe if I just had a serving, 12 chips, yeah, right. Forget that. I know that I'm going to eat at least as many as it takes for the nacho cheese goodness to outline the fingerprints on my fingers. Not even close. Man, I love Doritos. I love all colors. I love blue. I love green. There's yellow. There's dark red. There's kind of a purpley red. I don't know what the names of them are, but I know the colors. And once you get the fingerprint cheese, 
you have to keep going until your taste buds are no longer functioning. It's just kind of MSG lying there, telling your body to keep going. So I do. Want some Doritos, guys? <laughs> Can't social distance. These are nacho Doritos. <laughs> I got some laughs here. I hope I did at home, too. You know that space between your, your mind knows that you shouldn't do something, but you just can't stop? That's the space where I'm at with Doritos. I better quit. There's conflict in me. I know I shouldn't eat so many Doritos, and I know I shouldn't eat them five nights a week, but I just can't stop. Now, this is a playful way to talk about conflict, right? But there's inner conflict in all of us. This was just about snack food. And I know that people have conflicts with their food. Some, some eat too much to their detriment, and others just can't bring themselves to eat. So I, I don't mean to be playful with serious eating conditions and disorders. But there's deep conflict within each of us, that space between when we know we should, should do something, but we can't bring ourselves to do it. When we know where God would have us go, but we just can't bring ourselves to go there. When we know what God would have us say or what we need to do in our lives, but we just can't seem to get there. Now, I grew up in a can-do family, in a can-do state, in a can-do country with all of this resourcefulness and and gumption. And so when it comes to this inner conflict, I, I tend to think that I can will my way through it, but things like Doritos get the best of me. Paul is teaching us about inner conflict, a conflict that lives within each of us. The conflict looks different, yet it's the same struggle. The struggle between knowing where God would have us go and what the way of the Lord is and our ability to live into that. Paul says some really powerful things. I don't understand my own actions. I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I can will what is right, he says, but I cannot do it. I do not do the good that I want. This is Paul. If you think about the authors of our, our, the books and the scriptures as perfect and holy and, and those who have got it all figured out, listen to the words of our brother Paul who says, I can't even understand my own actions. I cannot do what I know that I should. Paul's describing for us this yearning to follow God, to live like Jesus, to love like him in our families, in our communities, and in the world. But he just can't bring himself to do it. Wretched man that I am, he says, who will rescue me from this body of death? He describes living in this conflict, in this space where we know what God would have us do, but we just can't bring ourselves to do it. He describes it as a body of death, Who will rescue us from this body of death? Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You know, when we're stuck, when we know there are are people we need to forgive or pains we need to let go of or ways that we need to care for ourselves in a more holistic and healthy way, Jesus is right there with us when we're stuck. When our wheels are spinning and we can't get over the hump, we can't will ourselves to do what is next and what is right and what is holy. Jesus is right there waiting for us to hear his words, I'm here and I'm here to help. I'm here to help you with that. That's the rescuing Paul is talking about. Jesus rescuing us isn't just about this journey to to heaven. It's it's about the day-to-day conflict we live with, about learning how to love ourselves and our neighbors as God loves us. In our stuckness, Jesus is reaching out to let us know he's there and to take those first steps with us. 
I believe we can support the rescuing that Jesus is, is completing, is fulfilling, is inviting us to be a part of. I think we can support that rescuing. I, and I don't mean to say we can do it on our own, but I believe that, that we can let that spirit work within us. And we support Jesus rescuing in our prayer and in our worship, in our generosity, in our acts of compassion, in our forgiving and being forgiven, in our fighting for justice and peace. When we walk the path, it is the rescuing that Jesus is doing in our lives. You know, Jesus rescuing is also intended to be some product placement some advertising for God's love. When Jesus rescues us and begs us and invites us and commands us to follow him, he gives us the opportunity to spread that word, to advertise the good news that God loves us all and is here to help us in our lives. When people in your family or in your workplace or on your block, or your friends, or acquaintances, you know if they're spinning their wheels and stuck in life, you might be the one God is sending to them to say, Jesus is there, right there with you, ready to help. This is the good news. It's the promise, the rescuing, the new life that Christ is always giving us. May we live this new life. May we let go of the struggle and follow him. Amen. time and worship we would normally collect an offering um, but even though our building remains closed the mission and ministry of the church is still continuing um, so thanks to your generosity not only are we continuing we're continuing strong um, your generosity supports amazing things like the pop-up food pantry which is starting again in august so if you or, or anyone you know is in need of some food assistance um, please mark your calendars for the fri uh, fridays all fridays in august um, we're so thankful that your generosity makes this possible. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need.
church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. As the birds of the air nest in the branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade, shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and to walk in the steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help, uh, help this congregation to ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements from the life of the community. We will be having outdoor worship um, this Sunday at 10 a.m. if you'd like to join us for that. We're so thankful and, and joyful that we have this online community as well. So thanks for tuning in every week. Um, if you're curious about what August worship will be like, just stay tuned for more information. Keep your eye on your email. We'll let you know soon. Receive the blessings. God the Creator. Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Let's sing.
Christ is with you. Live in love like Jesus. Thanks be to God.